Hello guys, today I'll teach you how to create quick clouds in Cinema 4D Redshift using the Redshift Environment object. It's a really quick technique if you want quick results. Not especially something that would blend well with the background, but if you've already got clouds there and you just want an additional layer on top, a bit like in this project, let's give it a look. Yeah, the clouds in the background are already captured by the HDRI. But if you need any foreground clouds just to cover up the main object flying passing through or if you're doing a still image then this would definitely be a far quicker way of doing it than using volumes and adding noise to that and then waiting for all that to, to render. So let's get rid of this. Um, we can get rid of that. Let's create a new material because we're going to be using, the noise are going to be created using noise. The clouds are going to be created using noise. Um, let's grab ourselves another redshift environment. Good thing to do is drop down the scattering to a much lower amount, far lower amount, even maybe like 0.6. Because every time you turn on the uh, IPR, it's going to completely blow it out. Okay, now all you have to do is just drag and drop this there, open up the material. Now we're not working with surface, that's to do with geometry, so we can cut that, so we can delete that, add a max and noise, and that goes into, not the environment, but the volume, right? Let's have a look what that looks like. All right, not very good, it's still fully blown out. So let's do a few adjustments to that. First of all, we have to pick the right noise. Naki is a good one for clouds. Um, gaseous is self-explanatory. Hmm. Even the name says it's pretty good for gas. Uh, turbulence is not the best, although let's give it a go. Let's say just normal turbulence and see what happens. Got to crank the scale to actually see the noise and the contrast. Now this won't work well, this doesn't look very cloudy-like. What you have to do to split the clouds into their own clumps to raise the low clip, and when you do that bit by bit, you start to see that the clouds are now forming. Not the best clouds. You need a bigger scale. It's more like it. You need the offset slightly. You can already see that the clouds are there working very nice. You can animate the offset too, if you want. That's exactly what I did in that ship. The ship itself moved, was stationary with the HDRI. The only thing moving was the, was the noise and um, the camera. But even then, you can still get a really nice effect. Let's do that for example. Now, if you've got, even when you crank up the octaves, sometimes that's not going to help you, and the noise itself is going to look lumpy by nature. When you can see here, it's not really cloudy like. Even when we crank that to the very end, that's still not going to help our cause. That's one way to fix that, and that's using another noise. If we just drag that in, and if we put that into the offset, this tiny noise is going to slightly move the values of the larger one and that's going to, you could say, shred it to bits. If we add another, tur if we use displaced turbulence, it's got some nice contrast. We really don't need much change in values to get the effect to work as we want. You can see that the whole noise moves. Let me move the slider along. You can also bump the contrast up shred it even more. We're using the wrong type of noise. We can use Naki for that. Slightly up that. Right, you can already see the change. Let's use Naki for this one as well. There we go. We've already got some really nice clouds. Maybe instead of Naki, let's get wavy turbulence, that should really add that wispiness to it. But we just do a bit too rough. Maybe the contrast is a bit too wild. 
it's hardly anything. And usually when working with clouds, we're going to need a yellowish color, hue tint to them. Oh, not here, not here. As the sun is setting, the clouds are above quite high in the air, so they're going to get lots of sunlight. And this HDRI image, you can see it's it's captured in sunset, I think, I believe. So there's going to be quite, quite a lot of yellow going on. Let's actually move the offset of this. I don't really like it, how it looks. Oh, I can't. Well, too bad. Um, let me change this. Oh, yes, we can a bit. Alright, so we do have some control. Even though the offset is managed by a different noise, you can still change the larger noise itself using the animation. And that should look about right. Maybe a bit too yellow. Really stylize those clouds. And there you have it guys. A nice easy way to get clouds. Well, they look like clouds but it's all thanks to that redshift environment. They're quick, they take not long to render, they don't get in the way, and it's all thanks to only one node and one material. You can do all sorts of math with these noise if you want. It doesn't have to be just this noise, you can mix them all up, multiply one with the other, and do any kind of variation you want. It's a nice effect as well. For some situations this would probably be the best shot without having to go to Houdini. Um, creating VDBs, you know, adding noise to that. Um, this would just work straight out of the box and would give you almost as good effects, if not better, because they just take quicker to render. Hope I managed to help. I'll see you in the next tutorial.